and we'll, we'll, we'll go on from there. Genesis, the 48th chapter, the ninth verse. I, I read the King James Version. Um, <laughs> I'm not King James only. It's just what I've always known. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down. He crouched down as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall be the gathering of the people, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth shall be white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea and he shall be for an haven of ships and his border shall be unto Zion. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. He saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant to tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way of the adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels. You know what? We went through all of this and I think I am in the wrong chapter and that is just terrible. Yeah, that really is terrible. 50th chapter. I didn't think it sounded right. I'm familiar with it, so it sounded familiar. It just didn't sound right. Uh, you know what? We're just going to we're, we're just going to skip down. Was it the 48th chapter then? It very well could have been. Yeah, it was the 48th chapter. You know what? You, you guys know about the macular degeneration that, that, that I've got in my eyes. Uh, actually, it says 48. And I'm a truck driver. I think you said 48 the first time. You did. That's what I, I did say 48. You okay. Did. I wow. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you know, for dramatic effect, we're not going to go through all that again. Because you know what I want is right at the end. We're going down to the 17th verse. And when Joseph saw, 48th chapter, and when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. <laughs> Thinking about Jacob, and this has nothing to do with what we're reading. Jacob getting the, the cross blessing there because he's the one that stole the blessing from his elder brother to begin with. He, he knew a thing or two. He, he says, uh, and his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he shall be great, but truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed. This is the part I want you to catch. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Not a multitude of tribes, not a great big huge tribe. His seed will become a multitude of nations. Okay? You guys, everybody in here know, knows uh, nations there. That, that's the Goy, and we are referred to as the Goyim because we are to them the Gentile nations. But it was prophesied all the way back in Genesis that Ephraim was going to become nations. Okay. Jonathan, Deuteronomy, 30th chapter, 1 through 6. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. And shalt return and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul. That, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Okay. He's going to scatter them out 
He's going to draw them back in. This is Deuteronomy. They haven't even gone in to the promised land yet. And I do want to make something clear. What I'm going to say here in a few minutes is what I found. I didn't find that. That's been preached before. It's just something else came to my uh, my mind. And I, I saw something else in there. But okay, so God says I am going to scatter you among who? <laughs> Four corners of the earth. Poof. They're out there. They're, they're gone. They made God so mad. Judah, the, the, the elder brother there, he stayed in his land for a lot longer until their abominations. They, they, they turned their, uh, what would become the Talmud, they turned it into a God to where they countermanded what was written in the Bible for them to do. Jesus rebuked them for that in their day so they turned that into their own God and says, well, that's enough of you too. And he kicked them out. But they had more stamina. But they had a little more stick to itness, And they took their Phariseeism and they scattered that wherever they went. They made converts. And I'm not against the Jews. Don't get me wrong. But God scattered them just the way he said he was going to scatter them. If we know in the book of Deuteronomy, before they were even over into the promised land, that God said he was going to scatter them, why would we doubt that he is going to gather them? Amen. Yep. Amen. Who is them? I never made it to the English teacher. Who is them? I is. I is? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Alabama boy talking to a West Virginia boy. Amen. Michaela, 2 Kings 17, give me verses 7 and 8. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. Amen. God fulfilled what he said he was going to do. God sent the Assyrians, the Assyrian kingdom. They, they came down uh, into the land of Israel, the ten northern tribes. They uprooted the ten northern tribes and they moved them out. Now, I, I am not preaching conspiracy theory here. I just find it interesting that when the Europeans come over here and they start digging around and finding archaeological fragments of stuff, that they find the Ten Commandments carved in stone in Chillicothe, Ohio. Written in Paleo-Greek, not the block script. Say what? Wasn't it Paleo-Hebrew? What did I say? Greek. I'm sorry. I won't get into that. That's a rabbit trail in and of itself. Greek is actually, when they, they, they taught them how to read Hebrew, Greek originally went from right to left. But when you was writing Greek, in ancient Greek, you could start at the left and you could write and then you just drop down. It developed and it kept going and kept going. And we're supposed to be smarter than they are those old knuckle draggers out there. But we're not going to go down that rabbit trail. Uh, that, that was 2 Kings. Give me Matthew, the 15th chapter. Give me 22 through 28. 15, 22 through 28? Yes, no more rabbits. Uh, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their masters' table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How lost can you get? I've been pretty lost before. I'm a truck driver. 
I, I've been pretty lost before. You can get out places where you have no idea where you're going, where you're heading to. I mean, it's all cloudy. You can't even find the sun to find an east and a west. You can get good and lost. Well, the ten tribes have been scattered for so long and so far out, they don't even know who they are. That's right. Their cultures have been blended into the cultures that they were sent to, and Ephraim became nations. Yep. You can track it. You can see it. You can go through the books that they don't allow us to have in our Bible. They want you to shut up and not read that stuff yep. because it says stuff that they don't want to hear. It right. says stuff that they don't want you to read. Yep. Leave that book alone. Well, you know, the Levites kept it in their Bible. Why can't I keep it in mine? Because it doesn't fit their narrative. Yep. You bunch of Catholics. It doesn't fit the narrative. Amen. Let's go over to Revelation. I would like to point out before we go on that God still had mercy on that woman. Yes. He said, I am not sent to any but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I've got to go back. We were talking about painting yourself into a corner. I understand the Catholics keep that in their Bible. They're just encouraged not to read it. So they do have the Apocrypha in their Bible that still doesn't count all the books I'm talking about. But okay, Revelation, the seventh chapter. This is the part... After the dream I had that I wanted to go back and I was starting to read and this actually has nothing to do with what I was researching, has nothing to do with what I was reading. It's just one of those times and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. I sat down and I started reading and point A clicks with point B. Yeah. It has nothing to do with what you was thinking about, nothing to do with what you was studying, but that's why you read the whole thing and let God put yes. it together. Yes. How can he bring it to your remembrance if you don't have it on the inside to begin right. with? Right. You sit down and you read it and, hey, I remember seeing that somewhere else. Okay, Revelation, the seventh chapter. We're going to pick up the fourth verse. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim, Nephilim, there we go, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Jonathan, go get me 1 Kings, the 12th chapter. I want verses 28 and 29. So we have that nice little roll call of the tribes of Jacob. The tribes of Israel. But there's somebody missing. Dan's missing. Where's Dan? Where, where's Dan in the roll call? Well, what I understand, there are those that believe that Dan was kicked out because of idolatry. Dan kind of lost his inheritance. So he was left out of the roll call. 1 Kings 12, 28 and 29. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out, up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put, other put he in Dan. Put it in Dan. So Dan falls into idolatry. Dan has the, 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 the golden calf up there. And, oh, great calf. You are weighty and powerful. Made out of gold, it probably was weighty, but um, we're not talking about Dan. Who else is missing? Ephraim. In the roll call that was given of the 12 tribes of Israel, 
Ephraim's not there. I was reading about trumpets, and then I see this like, hey, wow. Hold on a second. I've heard this before in Genesis where God said he was going to make a multitude of nations out of Ephraim, and now when it comes to the roll call, Ephraim's not even mentioned. Ephraim is not even mentioned as a tribe, not having 12,000 sealed. Hmm. CNC Music Factory, things that make you go, hmm. Carrie, Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verses 10 and 12. I was raised Gen X, I can't hear it, can't help it. So, nobody else has any idea what I'm talking about, because I'm right in that pocket of time. I want Isaiah 11 and 10 and 12. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Okay. To it shall the Gentiles see. The goyim. And his rest shall be glorious. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. He's going to set up an ensign for who? The nations. I'm going to make what of Ephraim? He sets up an ensign as he's gathering the outcast of Israel. We are on the stage for the end time. We have a nation over there right now. Everybody's all excited since 1948. Oh, Israel's a nation again. Lord's coming. That's only part of the prophecy because that's not Israel. That's Judah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Jews are not Israel. Well, Jews are Israel, but all of Israel is not Jews. Amen. We're waiting for these that are out. And as they're going out, they're going into Africa because it turns out there were Jews. When he scattered them into the four corners, some of them ended up in Africa. And they start bringing them off out of Africa, but they're not Jews. They do this DNA test to them. Say, hey, brother, come on up. Because their culture got so mixed in yeah. to what was the culture of the part of the continent that they were in. The outcast of Israel. That's what we are supposed to be doing as disciples of Yeshua. That is what we are supposed to be doing is gathering together the outcast of Israel. Does that mean there's no hope for the Gentile? No. Doesn't mean there's no hope for the Gentile. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to Joel. I'll tell you, seriously, my vision's getting a little wonky here. Uh, I'm going to let you get it, Jonathan. Joel, second chapter. Get me 23 through 29. Uh, Josiah, go get me Acts, the second chapter. Yes, sir. Just hold on to that. Do you have Joel? No, you don't have Joel. Joel's Old Testament. Carrie, why don't you read me Joel? Oh, did you get it? What chapter and verse? Second chapter, give me 23 through 29. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. It's a nice song. It's the former and the latter rain together. Go ahead. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. What a blessing. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall be, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, so God's blessing them, and now he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your sons and your daughters. Who is this written to? Is this written to Australians? No. Is it written to the Japanese? It's written to Israel. It's written to Israel. Your sons and your daughters 
shall prophesy. Go ahead. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Okay, okay. Now, who did I give Acts to? Give me one through six and then we're going to skip down because I'm not going to make you read it all. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Uh -huh. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Okay. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Mm -hmm. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And speak, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. Okay. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Okay, so the promise comes down upon them. They, they, they start speaking in tones and everyone says, hey, you, you, you guys are drunk. You guys have been drinking. We, we hear everybody speaking. How can you think they're drunk if you hear everybody speaking in your in your own tongue when you're in every <laughs> nation? under heaven I, that, that's a bad one but okay go, go over and get me 14 through 18 this is Peter's explanation but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem be this note unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken as ye suppose mm -hmm. seeing it is but the third hour of the day okay. but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel Okay, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All your... Okay. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But there's only a reaction from some. Who's that reaction? And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. And your young men shall see visions. Okay. And your old men shall dream dreams. Yes. And all my servants and all my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Okay. Now, why does he mention, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy? But I'm going to also pour out my spirit on your handmaidens and on your servants. Evidently, they weren't Israel. They were brought into Israel because they weren't mentioned as being children of Israel. So they've got, they've got their servants in there. You couldn't keep a Jewish slave. You could have a Jewish servant. You couldn't have a Jewish slave. So they would import their servants because they wouldn't call them slaves, but that's another that, that's another issue. But he's going to pour out a spirit on them too and, and they're going to prophesy. Okay, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. But what is this? That's the title that we're going with today. This is that, but what is this? And I hope I don't have you guys all as lost as it appears that some of you are, but we'll get there. I promise you we will get there. Numbers 15 and 29. Speedy draw there over on my right. Go ahead. I, I, I want Numbers 15 and 29. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Okay, so Israel has always been made up of the sons of Abraham that have been passed down, Abraham's seed, but they've also always had the strangers because there has always been those that would look and they would say, hey, there's something to this. Our gods are made out of stone and wood. Their God actually defends them. Yes. So there's always been those strangers that would come in and they would see and they would worship Yahweh. And when they would worship Yahweh, they would become 
part of Israel's law because God didn't say, you go keep your feast days and your holidays and everything, then go, go kiss Baal's big toe or whatever. He didn't say that. He brought them in and they were made part. So they would come in and they were under the same law. And that's an oversimplification, I understand. But that, that's more or less the way it was. It says time and time again that the same law is to the stranger as it is to Israel. Amen. So these handmaids have come in. These servants have come in. They're still under the law that God gave Israel because they're living with Israel. That means their servants got the Sabbath off. But... That's another one that we're not going to get into. You know, the, the, the fourth commandment's still in effect, and a lot of people don't understand that. I'm going to take my law and I'm going to write it in your hearts. Didn't change the law, it just changed the location. Amen. Amen. Uh, go get me uh, Acts. Who had Acts the second chapter a little bit ago? You did? Okay, now get me 37 and 38. And if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to have you guys reading this. I, I'm kind of done. Carrie, go get me uh, Mark, the 16th chapter. Get me Acts 37 and 38. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Okay, you killed your Messiah. You hung him on a tree. You fulfilled all this prophecy. Peter lays into him and he lets him know. And then he says, but your rulers did it in ignorance. So he lays that down to them and they start saying, wow, yeah, I remember him healing that guy. I remember him healing the blind guy at Siloam. I, I remember all these things. You know what? This guy's got something. He might be a dumb fisherman, but he's on to something there. So he's done preaching to them. He is through preaching. This is not part of the Pentecostal message. This is not part of what Peter was preaching to them that day. This is in response to a question. Yep. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was his response to their question. Um, honestly, we, we have come, we, we, we've been, I like saying it, and everybody gets a kick out of it. We've received the left foot of fellowship. and We, we, we got booted out of a church before, and God, just like your song, brother, it, it, he's had us on this journey. Yes. And we've been, uh, right now I feel like I am getting sucked into not uh, Judaism, but I'm getting sucked into Hebrewism. What would you call it? Some English teacher I would have made. But I mean, I, I'm getting sucked into the culture and I start seeing it. I saw the brother Shafar when he came in and I got all excited. But because I, I love things Israel, not, not yeah. Judah, not Jewish. I love things Israel. Amen. So I mean, I, I am researching and I am questioning and I am looking and I am trying to see. But I can't get past the salvation that I have always seen. Yes. You know? We, we had a, a couple, actually more than a couple, uh, but they had a family almost as large as ours, but we, we had uh, uh, Karen and Pablo come into our church there in uh, Gaffney, and that they're Hispanic. And Pablo, I, I, I loved them both. They were really good people, but uh, Pablo didn't like it when you called him Paul. He is from a different culture, yeah. but he's not going to lose his identity because he is in the United States of America where we speak English. Pablo did not like it when you called him Paul. He would respond, kind of with a snarl, but he would respond because he knew what you were saying. So many questions. So much stuff. His mommy didn't call him Jesus. Yeah. Right. J is not that old. The letter J is not that old. It came from the 
Germanic. It's like 500 years old or so. His mommy didn't call him Jesus. Now what I read, his mommy called him Yeshua. Amen. And everybody looks at this man that we call Jesus Christ. Jesus is his first name. Christ is his last name. No! Don't you dare baptize him in the title of Lord. Christ is a title. Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Ha. Ha. Jesus the Messiah. Yeah. Amen. He answered to Yeshua. He answered to Yeshua. Do I think it's disrespectful to call him Jesus? No. But all these things I ponder. And I'm walking and I'm getting deeper into this. And you know, I'm not saying God put on the brakes. That's enough. I'm saying, God, bring me closer. Yeah. Bring me closer into your truth. Help me to see. Help me to understand. You have no idea how many times I am on my face and I am saying, God, don't let me deceive anybody. Amen. Don't let me deceive and don't let me be deceived. Amen. Amen. My whole culture is changing. My thought process is changing. But I still see the same plan of salvation. It never changed. I, I really, I, I seriously, this might seem a bit extreme if you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm tired of abortion. Amen. I am tired of transvestites. Amen. Do you know the homosexuals are tired of the transvestites? Yeah. But I'm tired of the homosexuals too. I'm yeah. tired of this whole rotten, and I don't mean that as an expletive, I mean that as an adjective. This whole rotten culture that we have going on around us, I do not consider myself a citizen. Yes. I am a yes. taxpayer. Yes. I am a citizen of a kingdom that is going to be yes. coming, that is going to be set up Amen. on this earth yes. because this earth was made to be inhabited. Yes. Just ask Isaiah. Amen. Yes. Lord, lead us. Yes. Lord, guide us. Amen. Help us to see the truth. Amen. Because in the end, I love you all, but in the end, the only thing that matters is the truth. Yes. 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 And that's where I am. And I can picture when I'm through preaching this, my messianic brethren will be saying, what are you? Apostolic Pentecostal? And the apostolic Pentecostals will be saying, what are you? Messianic? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Child, yeah. Child of the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Let's go to Mark, 16th chapter, 15th verse. Michaela, uh, you're busy writing. I won't ask you to read it. Can you read it? Get me Mark 16 and 15, but don't lose your place. I want to bring out something here. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I've got a backpack full of these little DNA tests and I want you to take it everywhere and I want you to take these DNA tests and give it to these people because you're going to find the outcast of Israel. 1900 years too early on that one, I guess. <laughs> no, he says, I've got a really much easier way here of discerning. Because in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out on how much flesh? Oh. I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. And unfortunately, the one that really sticks in my mind is old men dream dreams because usually I'm dreaming dreams. But I'm not that old. Amen. Give me 16 through 18 now, Michaela. 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Uh -huh. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So baptism is still in there. And those that have a problem with uh, calling Jesus Yeshua. Did you know baptism is not an English word? It's not. It's Greek. It is a Greek word that was transliterated into the English language to give us a name for baptism. Johanna the Immerser. <laughs> yeah. Amen. There's still ways to say it. The Geneva Bible. When they translated the Geneva Bible, a lot of places where it is baptism, they translated it washings. It's still true, but what was the, the mikvah? It is not something that is peculiar to Christianity. It was already part of the Jewish culture. It was already part of what was going on in Israel. So when he tells his apostles to go into all the world, go into all nations, because that's where he sent them. When you go into all nations, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Because my spirit will be poured out on all flesh. Michaela? And these shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He didn't send them out with DNA kits. He sent them out with signs. He sent them out with signs. If this happens, they're the lost sheep of Israel. That was 738 B.C. that they were scattered out. So that's been, in our day, over 2,700 years. I imagine they're about as much Israel biologically as I am Iroquois. Because I am part Iroquois. But it, 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 it's just a tiny fraction, but it's still there. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know when we're speaking to somebody if they're Israel. That, that's the best explanation I know of when you go out in the street and you invite somebody and you tell them the gospel. You tell them there's somebody that is willing to pick them up out of the gutter. Somebody that is willing to take away their drugs. Yeah. Somebody that is willing to take away that lifestyle yeah. that is killing them. Amen. Right. And some people would rather die. Next. I love my cousin. I love my cousin like a brother. And this is pertinent to what we're talking about. I wasted, oh goodness. He just passed away last year, I believe it was. So I more or less wasted about 24 years trying to get him into what I knew. Which, like I said, my plan of salvation still hasn't changed. It's still what I see in the Bible. But I wasted all that time. How many people could I have been talking to Amen. when I was trying to convince this man that I considered a brother? But how much time did I waste on him? And yes, we come from mostly the same family tree, but somehow I am Israel and he is not. Because when that spirit fell on me, These signs shall follow them that believe. He stood in the midst of it. He stood in the midst of it. And he had no, no intention. No intention. Um, okay, let's go to Acts. Jonathan, why don't you give me this one? Acts, the 10th chapter. 43 through 48. Carrie, go get me Acts 19. If the Darnells had a bigger Bible over there instead of that little phone, I'd ask them to read something. It's on the Suburban Center Copy. Oh, okay. Okay, you didn't bring the Suburban. <laughs> 700 miles that way. Okay, go ahead. To him, give all, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. <laughs> While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. I'm going to pour out my spirit.
spirit on all flesh. And when Peter spoke these words, that spirit was poured out on all flesh. What happened? And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, uh -huh. because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The gift of the Holy Ghost. But so they, they took this DNA test over there and they said, Here, swap your swap your cheek and uh we'll we'll send it out and we'll tell you if you're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Nah, they had something a lot quicker than that. Go ahead. For they heard them speak with tongues. Yes. Hmm. And magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. These signs shall follow them that believe. Now, uh, that there are those, and I, I get kind of uh, poked around sometimes from different ones for quoting David Bernard, but I think it's pertinent to this. Because there are those that say, well, yeah, but that manuscript was added to Mark like 400 years after it was written. So that would put it in the hands of the Roman Catholic Church, and you've got some scribe that decided to add something about speaking in tongues and healing and uh, uh, picking up serpents and drinking poison, something the Roman Catholic Church really doesn't believe in. And some scribe put it, that doesn't make sense to me at all. More likely part of a manuscript got lost somewhere and the Baptists grabbed a hold of it or the Catholics grabbed a hold of it and said, hey, this is what we believe already. Amen. Acts 19, 1 through 7, Josiah, go get me Galatians, the third chapter. I want 26 through 29. Michaela, when you're through writing, go get Psalm 22. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And Paul said, Oh, that's fine. Then said Paul, you, You've been baptized, that's fine. John's baptism's good. We like John. John was a good man. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Oh, you got one now. Hey. <laughs> Jesus. It was the same. You, you go get me Romans the eleventh chapter, then, brother. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Brother Gerard, you're so far away from the microphone, I don't know if it pick you up or not. Man, that's well, we've never had this problem before. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, so that was Acts. That was 19. So again, it happened the same way. The scholars that are out there, and they are out there, and they make a living having fancy titles before and after their name. They're Dr. So-and-so, Doctor of Theology, Doctor of Religion, and all this other stuff. And they take the manuscripts, and I'm kind of jealous in a way because they can read Greek, they can read Hebrew, they can read Aramaic. And they take the word and they chop it up and rip it up and throw it out there. But they'll say, you can't take the book of Acts as history. We don't know that that is actually what happened. But the Apostle Paul said, you know, we've got Romans through Jude. That is books of New Testament theology. Okay? The only place 
where we get to see New Testament theology acted out is in the book of Acts. If we don't see it in the book of Acts, how are we going to know what it looks like? So much of it sounds so good, and I wish it was just as easy as believe on the Lord with your heart and repeat after me and put $20 in the offering. I wish that was easy. I, I wish that's the way God made it, but it's not. It's not what they did in the New Testament. It is not what was prophesied. It is not what was prophesied. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And some people, are, they, the, the spirit hits them and they just, what was that? These signs should follow them to believe. Yes. yes. These signs should follow them to believe. Yes. The spirit gets poured out a lot. Amen. I know you felt it. Amen. The spirit gets poured out. Yes. Amen. Now, I am not casting Gentiles aside because we've got word for that too from the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, which is a book of New Testament theology. Amen. Uh, Galatians 3, give me 26 through 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Okay. There's one law given to the stranger yes. that has bound himself to Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah, Whatever translation you have, there is one spirit that falls upon all of them. He did not cast the Gentiles out. Yes. He did not cast the Gentiles out. Go ahead, um, Psalm 22. Oh, I'm sorry, Psalm 29 through 31. And they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. And they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. A seed shall serve him. If we are in Christ... We are Abraham's seed. A seed shall serve him, and they will declare the righteousness of the Lord. Yes. Okay. Now I cut something short a little bit ago, so we're gonna we're gonna back up. Uh, who, who did I give Romans to? Did I give you Romans? Oh, hold on to that because we're going to the Revelation seven verse nine. You know, they used to have this uh, cartoon years ago. Where on earth is Carmen San Diego? And on the cereal box, you can play this, this game of where's Waldo? And you, you can find Waldo on the cereal box somewhere. It's full of sugar. Don't eat it. You look like me. So, where's Ephraim? He's not on the cereal box. Amen. He's not hanging out with Carmen San Diego. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude. <laughs> you will become a multitude of nations. Yes. Amen. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. All these nations that spirit was poured out upon them and they came in when the spirit was poured upon them. They came in. Ephraim is scattered everywhere. 
You can't look at somebody. It's despicable, really. It's just as prejudiced as anything else. But they always pick on the Jews because they have that, that, that nose, usually. Well, that, that, that's bull. That, that really is bull. But all of Israel doesn't look like what we think a Jewish person looks like. They don't all have olive brown skin anymore. It was that way once upon a time, but we've all been intermixed. Yes, yes. I've got a surname that is German. Yes. It's supposed to be Ott. They changed it. That's another long story. It was changed, but I've got a German surname, and I'm almost pure English. Yeah. Things get all mixed together. So he didn't say take the DNA test out. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and these signs yeah. will follow them that believe. Yep. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He had mercy on the Syro-Phoenician woman. For your faith, it is granted to you. Yes. Romans 11, <laughs> 11 through 23. Auctioneer time. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Speaking of the Jews. The rather... Through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Okay, Brother Robbie, hold your spot right there. I don't want you to lose it because we're coming right back to it. But he says, okay, these believers out here that were part of all nations, God is going to use these people that are in the family tree of Abraham and he is going to use them to provoke them to jealousy. Yes. Because the Jews, which they did stay faithful to God for so long, the Jews are going to get jealous of their Christmas. Yes. The yes. Jews are going to get jealous of their Easter. No. <laughs> the Jews are going to get jealous of all their, their Catholic holidays I can just see the Jews over there. Hey, Halloween time! Nope. If what is called the church is the seed of Abraham and God is going to use them to provoke the Jews to jealousy, how? It's a totally different religion. Yeah. They're, they're, my dad, my grandpa, they helped build the Church of Christ in Reader, West Virginia. Church of Christ doesn't even have the Old Testament in their Bible. They have no idea what their identity is. They're Gentiles. They are as Gentile as Gentile can get. When we come into the feast days and we start reading the Old Testament... And we read where God is saying, you're going to have these holy days. You are going to have these feast days for all of your generations. Yes. Yes. It didn't end with Malachi. Yes. We come into this. We start keeping their Sabbath. You know what? There's a synagogue down there on the other side of town. I hope they see our sign. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they see our sign because God is going to use our identity to provoke them to jealousy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's what says, amen. That's what Paul said. Okay, now go ahead and I will try my best not to interrupt you, but I probably will anyway. You're good, brother. For I speak to you Gentiles and as much as I am an apo the apostle to the, of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which, were, which are my flesh, it might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but the life from dead, the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. If the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them that partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee 
Amen. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt also be cut off. Amen. The root never changed. Right. No. Right. The root never changed. Amen. He, he didn't look at Israel and he said, you know what? And this is what's preached. You're rotten to the core. I'm going to cut you down. And I'm going to plant a Christmas tree. That's what it is. <laughs> and, and then that's going to be my people in this Christmas tree. <sighs> that's not what God did. Scattered them to the four winds. We don't know who's who. Well, we don't know who's in. The only way we know is the signs that we were given in the Bible. This is what's going to happen to them. But we have to be grafted in. Right. Yeah. If we're not grafted in, well, grafted into what? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And I'm not just using that because I love the Sabbath so much, which I do. But I'm not just using that because it's the Sabbath. I'm saying we still have His commandments. Yes. We still have the commandments of God. That wasn't done away with. You were not grafted in. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can show me where it says anything about the Gentile bride. Great one. She's not in there. Graft in to that root because the root was holy. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Carry Revelation 1 and 1. We're going to tie this up. Jeremiah. <laughs> How many years have we been out of the church that we went to? Seven, eight years? We, 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 we well, we got booted out. And we, we, when we got booted out, we started meeting. The first time we had service was over there at the uh, Welcome Center in South Carolina. And then at different times, we had it in the living room. And then she found that building in Gaffney. And we were in that building in Gaffney for six or seven years. And I have used this scripture and used this scripture. And you can see my journey because God always had this scripture on my heart when I was preaching. And he brings me in and he shows me things and he shows me more and he shows me more. But they can all just about quote it by heart, not because they've read it, because they've heard it. And heard it and heard it and heard it. I got to the point where I started reading it over in Hebrews. Where it was written in Hebrews just to give them a break from Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah and with the Gentiles. No. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which by my covenant, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law yes. in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and shall and will be their God and they shall be my people. The law of God did not change the location of its engraving did. It is written in our hearts. Yes. Amen. The only covenant made was with Israel yes. That's it. and was with Judah. Amen. There's no other salvation. There's no other salvation. You, you're, you're not going to go to the Druids. You're not going to go to the Babylonian Catholics. They don't have it. They, they don't. One covenant. I'm um, going to the house of Israel. Be grafted in. Yeah, man. Be grafted in. It's not that hard. 
you were already that wild olive tree that was out there scattered to the wind. You was already that, that, that wild one out there. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but usually when somebody does come in, usually they're a little bit different from everybody else. They're that wild olive tree out there. There's something in them that they're hungering for. They just can't get it satisfied anywhere else they go. And you know they get older and they, they start the alcohol and they start the drugs and they start this stuff. And it doesn't satisfy that hunger that was on the inside of them that leads them and leads them. And then one day they hear the truth. When God sent me to South Carolina, I had warrants for my arrest in Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, South Carolina for that matter, and I did go to the pokey for a while. But God saves the wild off the branch. You can be grafted in. Uh, that, that's, I'll, I'll tell you the honest to goodness truth I, I stand up here I can't give my testimony anymore because people look at me and they don't believe it you couldn't have been a crackhead you're fat you know who Tony Dorsett was? is I, I used to smoke crack with his older brother in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania that cousin that I was telling you about that we worked on so hard trying to get him saved, he was the one that had me up there. Spunky Dorset. I kind of doubt he's even still alive now, but God changes people. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. In my heart from a child, I had a desire to serve God. He couldn't lead me in the Methodist church. I don't think God liked the path that I went on to get here. But he couldn't lead me in the Methodist church. He couldn't lead me in the Pentecostal church of God. He couldn't lead me in the church of Christ. We went to a Southern Baptist church for a while in New Martinsville, West Virginia. He couldn't lead me there. I wanted to serve him. But those people didn't know who he was. Yes, yes. And then I ended up marrying an apostolic's granddaughter. Let me rephrase that. An apostolic preacher's granddaughter. And although we're not exactly the same as we were when we came in, because you know he prunes those branches. Just the way he says he does in John the 15th chapter. He prunes those branches. If you are willing, he will lead you. If you are willing, he will turn you into what he wants you to be. Not what your idea of what you want to be, but what he wants you to be. Amen. That's my God. So I, I set up here with all this joy of where God has brought me from, and I don't give my testimony. Amen. Because nobody believes it. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Amen. The revelation. It's not something hidden. Something revealed. We Amen. just have to want to see the revealing of it. I don't want to be part of this culture. I don't want to be, you know, Jesus said it's going to be as it was in the days of Lot and as it was in the days of Noah. They bought, they sold, they married, they build, they do all this stuff because they're so busy. I don't want to be part of that culture. I want to be on the ark. Yeah. I want to be taken out of Sodom. Yes. I want to seek after God. I want to see the revealing. And I believe in our time, we're going to have the revealing. Yes. Amen. Amen. 